anomalies because we can't completely explain it. One uh, interesting video that we had, um, which will be part of the library presentation, so if they, if they come to that, they'll be able to see it. Me and another team member were in this business that we were investigating at the time, and we had a handheld camera very similar to this one, and we sat it down on the floor because I had all this other stuff in my hands and we just ran out of space. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about something, and all of a sudden you see this interesting shape come towards the camera and go into the floor, and we can't explain it. And it was so close to the camera, it wasn't dust and it wasn't a bug. We can't explain it, so we're like, could it be paranormal okay, because right. it's not something. Audio, um, several audio clips, um, which is, is called technically an electro, sorry, electronic voice phenomenon, EVP. Right. Mm -hmm. There's really two types of audio that you could capture during an investigation. One is an EVP. EVP meaning we did not hear it with the human ears. We did not hear it during the investigation, but recording equipment picked it up either a digital recorder, which is basically um, people use them for dictation, or, or the cameras pick them up. The other kind is called a disembodied voice. And a disembodied voice means if just like if you and I were talking and all of a sudden we heard a voice but we couldn't find the person that it belonged to, right. so therefore it's called a disembodied voice. Mm -hmm. We have um, had disembodied voices on cases. We've had um, EVPs on cases. Probably one of the most interesting we've captured again was at Waverly Hills and three of our people were there investigating together and one of them saw a spider and they were concerned because they were afraid the spider was going to come and get them of so course. they asked one of the other team members <laughs> you know to, to take care of it and you actually hear a child's voice say the word spider and everyone in the investigation was an adult and so we were like okay that's kind of interesting oh my goodness. so when you hear something like that you know a lot of the, and another thing Kathy that we get a lot is most of my team members are women I have one man and we'll get men voices while we're there. And that's pretty easy when you know there's not a man with you and now you've got a man voice, that's pretty easy to go, okay, that person wasn't with us. Are you a ever able to identify um, the, the ghost or the person that's speaking to you? You know, that's really difficult. We've had maybe one case that we could say in, the, in the how we, it's not like they have a full-blown conversation like you and I are having right now. We would ask questions, we ask a series of questions, and basically how an EVP session works is we would ask a question and we don't say anything for about 20 to 30 seconds. We ask another question and because what we're trying to see is if they will interact. And we basically were at a case and we just started asking names of all the former owners of the property and we finally got to one and the, and the ghost actually answered back yes. Mm. And so then we, we jumped to the assumption then, well that's the only one they glommed onto so maybe it's this person. Can we prove it? No. I mean, you know, it. It is basically just that we know we got a response to that one particular question. Now, Melissa, are there different types of hauntings that you go on? Yeah, there are. And um, most, here's what's interesting about our field. The majority of the reports that we get, we are able to debunk. We don't go just expecting we're going to get ghosts. We actually go and try to see if we can find out, is there something electrical that caused the issue? Is there an air duct that's causing the problem? Maybe that banging is a loose shutter on the outside of the house, that kind of thing. So, so that's the majority of your things. You're able to debunk them in one way, shape, or form. The things that we can't can fall into four categories. One category is called a residual, mm -hmm. where residual haunting is kind of like a tape recorder or something on a video recorder, um, maybe even something you do on your DVR if that's something you're familiar with. But when you tape that program, how it plays back in a sequence, it's the same kind of thing, where that paranormal experience is really just a recording or an impression in the environment. Mm -hmm. Since it's energy, the theory is over time that that energy will run out and it will go away. So there's not a lot you could do about residual hauntings. They have to play themselves out. The next type's intelligent. This is a person that possibly the theories are they don't know that they have passed away or maybe they have unresolved business. Maybe it's a mother that still feels they need to take care of their child or maybe it's a father who feels he needs to finish that house project that he had started, you know, mm -hmm. something along those lines. And that kind of haunting actually interacts with you. There's intelligence to it, therefore why it's called intelligent. That's the ones we will get responses to. Most generally, they're harmless. You know, some people are so, they're afraid of spirits, they're afraid of the unknown, we're of afraid of what we can't see. Most generally, they're harmless, and if they do pull your hair or push you, they're just trying to get your attention. They're not trying to harm you. The third kind is called a poltergeist, and a poltergeist actually means noisy ghost in German, mm -hmm. and poltergeist is really more of a human 
giving off kinetic energy. They've got some frustrating things, some, maybe they're going through a hormonal change, maybe they had like a bad day at work, or maybe they're just going through a bad relationship break, and they actually give off the energy that's enough energy to cause something to move, something to break, a door opening, things like that. A lot of those cases have been tied back, believe it or not, to adolescent children, mm -hmm. you know, going through puberty, and a lot of them to girls. And mm -hmm. we, you know, they, they're still doing a lot of research in those cases, but they've started finding once that turmoil has, has passed in that person's life, a lot of that activity goes away. The fourth kind is a kind that, that honestly we hope we never experience and that's demonic. And that, the theory is that that's a spirit that has never truly been human and it's something that came from the other side. And, and, and luckily for us, knock on wood, we don't have any of those experiences because they can be very scary. Now, you don't expunge the ghost. You just we, find out if the correct, ghost is there. Correct, that's a good question, Kathy, because no, we, you know, you would need to get clergy, and we can help you with that. Like, if we find there's something in, in your house, we can help you find clergy to help see if they can, or if you're someone that's more into a natural approach, we can find someone that would help smudge the home. But we do not do that, no. We, and we, mm -hmm. the other thing we do not do is try to contact like if it's your father, your one, we don't do seances and we don't use Ouija boards and witch boards. We don't try to go after certain people, but we will be there to help you if you want to try to find out if there is something there and we'll try to, our best to find out if it's the person that you're looking for. We just don't use those kind of means. Well, Melissa, I could talk to you about this forever, but unfortunately we're running out of time. I thank you so much for coming and, oh, and no discussing problem. this thank with you. me today. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. If you would like to learn more about paranormal activity and investigations, come to the library and check out materials on the topic. For more information on this or any other upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library event, call the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org.